Chapter 2 of Personal Finance is about using financial statements and cash budgets to help you with your financial planning goals. Um, so basically, uh, the financial statements that it's referring to are like your personal balance sheet. And if you, you know, if you haven't taken accounting, this may be all new to you, but a balance sheet is your assets minus your liabilities equals your equity. Now, in this case, when we're doing it with a personal, you know, personal account, it's your assets minus your liabilities is going to equal your net worth. How much of those assets do you actually own outright and not owe the bank for? So you're going to list all of your assets and the balance sheet always lists it in order of liquidity. So liquidity means it's how quick can you turn it over into cash. Um, some things are cash, you know, like your checking account, your savings account are basically cash. You could go withdraw them at any point in time. But then you may have investments like in stocks or in bonds um, or in a 401k or an IRA. Those are not as liquid. Not to say you can't get cash from them, but it's a little more, you know, it's a little more difficult to do so. And then you could have real estate or cars or motorcycles or boats or physical assets, which again, you'd have to sell to be able to convert them into cash. So those are even harder. And of course, your home, you may not actually want to sell to convert it into cash. Um, so you'd list out all those assets that you own. Then you'd go through and think about it, um, you know, kind of line by line, what do you owe on? So maybe you've got credit cards, maybe you've got car loans, boat loans, um, college loans, mortgages, kind of just list out all of those liabilities and then you compare them. So then you add up your assets, add up what you owe, your all your liabilities, and then the difference between those, hopefully your assets are more than your liabilities, and that's considered your net worth. Now, if your liabilities were more than your assets, which in some cases, like say you just graduated from college and you have a ton of college debt, that could be the case. Um, but hopefully as you get income and you start savings and, and start buying assets, that will switch around. Um, but ideally the goal would be to have net worth, to have your assets higher than your liabilities and to feel, you know, kind of feel comfortable with that. Um, then you get into your income and expense statement. So your income is basically what you earn, what are you collecting cash from, salaries and wages, or if you do, you know, jobs on the side. Um, and then your expenses, what do you go out and you pay for? So the textbook gives you like a nice little exhibit of kind of what an average percentage would be. Like, so your housing is probably going to be a third of your monthly income. Um, they have transportation, which would include your car payment as well as your gas and your car insurance, which car insurance can be expensive as well, um, is the next highest. Then your groceries. So you have to realistically think about all of those things. And I know that my financial broker, it's like an exercise that he has me do every year. Look at my net income and then su subtract out what I think my expenses are. And then when you do that, you're like, man, I got a ton of money left over. And then it's like, well, where did all that money go? Because I really don't have that sitting in my checking account. Then you got to kind of go back through and really look at it. Look at those receipts and say, oh, wait a minute, I'm spending a lot more on clothes than I thought, or maybe I'm 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 buying takeout or going out to dinner way more than I thought because that also can be expensive, or maybe I'm I've done more traveling than I had anticipated. Um, so there can be a variety of things, or even medical expenses. Those are things you can't necessarily plan for. Um, so those are the, you know when you really sit down and do that exercise, then it's kind of eye opening to realize what you actually spent. And that kind of does also take you into the budgeting process because the budgeting process is going to say, okay, list out, this is your income, this is what you estimate your expenses should be for the upcoming year. Then as you kind of track that, if you're keeping records and kind of tallying those up month by month, then you can see where those variances are. If you expected to spend so much and then you ended up spending twice that, then that's an area that you would need to look at and maybe try to address your spending to see if it's not something you could curb um, you know, or kind of curtail it a little bit so that you could get yourself back on budget or maybe your budget just wasn't realistic in the first place or things change. But, but that's the benefit of it is that if you kind of are very 
diligent to say this is what I anticipate and then I go back and I look at it to see okay well where did I go wrong what am I spending more on it's that analysis after the fact that maybe can save you so if you're doing it every month you could say okay well gosh I've gone way over this month I better be more cautious next month um, just to try to keep you kind of keep you on track the other nice thing if you do the cash budget for like a whole year if you map it out go the entire year then you might say like well when I, my insurance is due maybe I pay my insurance quarterly or semi-annually so when those big payments come due I need to know that so either I should have been setting money aside in my savings account or I'm gonna pull money out of my savings account and then replenish it to get back on track by the end of the year um, or again Christmas if, if you know you're gonna spend a lot for Christmas set the, that money aside same with vacations I feel like it's always probably better to try to set that money aside in the first place then withdraw from that savings when you actually incur those expenses versus you know putting it on your credit card and then trying to pay it off because then you are in that deficit situation where you might um, feel a little bit uneasy. Um, then it gets into the time value of money computations and that's where our calculator comes in. So this calculator was on your syllabus as required. Um, so it's a, it's a Texas Instruments financial calculator and for me I have like the fancier version. There's a student version that you can get for like 30 bucks um, at the bookstore or, or Amazon or Walmart or Staples or wherever you can find it. Um, but look through the textbook for those because they give you examples because if you're saving long term or if you're getting a loan long term it's nice to factor in what those monthly payments would be for the loan when you know your interest rate or if you're saving for retirement or for a college fund or something like that if you know how much interest is being earned you can calculate what that future value would be or you would calculate like how much should I set aside today in order to have a certain amount in my savings account at a point in time. But if you look at the pages in the book, what they have is the inputs. You're going to type that into your calculator and when you see it on the display screen, then you push the corresponding button. So again, I'll try to put this over um, to the calculator but or to the camera. But these buttons right here, if I can get my fingers up there, that, that middle row is what we're focused on. So it's going to be the the um, N, the IY, the PV, the PMT, and the FV. And so you'll you'll put in the value first, push the corresponding button, then put in the next value, push that button, put in the you know you'll have you have five keys. So there might be a key in there that you zero out if you're not using it, um, but uh, but always zero it out so it doesn't impact your computation. And then what you'll do is then you hit the compute button and the compute button is right up here at the top. You hit compute and then you would go down to those keys and you'd hit present value or, or future value or whatever you're looking for. Um, so there is an appendix material in there. Um, I do have some business analysis with algebra videos that I might put out also here. You wouldn't follow them in this book, but you could hear me read a problem and then use the keys of the calculator and you could see it. So it doesn't quite relate exactly to this textbook, but it relates to the financial calculator. So watch for those videos out there as well, but it'll help you for your calculator. And then just play around with the, with do, do with the examples that are within the text, just so you're comfortable with how to use that calculator. And then it also, the last section talks about, we do have to think about inflation and, and um, how the cost of living is going to go up over time if we are planning for um, something more long term, such as retirement or college for our children. We need to make sure that we're factoring in that a dollar today is going to be worth much less a dollar 20 years from now. So we need to consider that as well as the interest rates that we're earning. The more interest we make, obviously, the better our investment will be. Okay, so that is it for chapter two.